Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You can watch this whenever you'd like. Uh, welcome to another edition of Enlightened Espresso. I'm here with Master Chung. Welcome. Um, in other episodes, we've, I've heard you talk about giving and the importance of being alone. All of those anxiety, they, they all seem to stem together. And when, we, when I look at that sort of uniting principle when you start teaching how to deal with those things, you're, um, uh, you talk a lot about openness. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it's a big term, but can we begin to define what openness means to you and, and sort of how the Buddhists would think about openness? I think we are dealing with a very, very deep, deep traditions um, in um, Buddhist uh, practice. Uh, when a student in the East, when a student like in China and Vietnam, when we come to a teacher, we always um, come because we want to learn Dharma, the teaching, right? But everyone looking for one point in time that we call Khai Wu, Khai Ngo, to open enlightenment. Everyone in the back of the mind, they always go to the teacher because they want to have something open. So the concept of open enlightenment, and the, the, the two words come together, open enlightenment, open and enlightenment come, stick together, open enlightenment. Um, it was in the back of every student who go to the teacher. So we don't go to the teacher to think that, okay, I'm follow every steps and I, and, and, and I get somewhere. No, I come to be open. So, and, and the teacher actually sometimes hit the head and let the student just, wow, wow. So we're looking for a wow moment okay. in our life. Sure. And, but that wow moment was never emphasized enough. I remember when I learned um, the sastras on the Mahaprasna Parameter by Nagarjuna. He wrote a long chapter. It's called Ta Chu Du Lun, Dai Ti Du Lun, sastra on the... The, the deep um, wisdom, transcendental wisdom. And he, he spent the first segment of the huge book, huge scriptures on giving parameter. And the big thing on it is how do you open your, your wow, your mind, so you can always look at things very fresh. And even nowadays, many people, many Zen masters, always talking about the beginner's mind. But for me, is What's the beginner's mind? The beginner's mind is a mind that has not polluted yet, that, that we, we have very curious about things and we deeply, deeply want to look at things in very fresh, never be conditioned by the prejudice and so on and so forth. Predispositions, prejudice, expectation, all of those things? Absolutely right. Okay. But I, I don't look at things in that way, but I look at things as the wow moment because there is some time that we... we, we we learn, and then we realize that we climbed the wrong wall. And the teacher said, hey, that's the wrong wall. Go to the other side. Wow! It's some time that we found that wow. And there's many, many wow in life. Not only the teacher wake us up, but maybe our spouse, our children. You know, sometimes you do something wrong, and, and your son said, Dad, that's the wrong way to go. And then you said, oh, wow, sorry to the other side. So maybe the wow is not the right thing to say, the right word, but, but it's something that you just wake up and that moment is very beautiful. And um, the practice of, of meditation is part of the wow system, meaning it takes you from one wow to the other wow and keep open up, keep open up, keep open up. And therefore, we need to be wrong side first. We need to be wrong first in order to know that we are right. And the, we cultivate the mentality that I'm ready. I'm ready because I may be in the wrong place. So this, the, the cultivation is not about, okay, I always write. I always write. But the readiness to accept, that is the attitude that you cultivate in order to be open. And then, then opening up even you know, the importance of the lotus in, in Buddhism and, and it comes that and That's the opens symbolism, up. yes. Is that the symbolism of yes. openness? Yes. So, wh where does openness take you? That openness takes you to constantly open and keep opening and keep opening forever. The path is forever open. 
it never a moment that the past with the lotus will say, okay, I'm, 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 I'm done. No. The lotus will grow into a thousand lotus and a thousand petal lotus keep growing into millions petal lotus. It keep growing forever. So that's the way that we call constantly growing is a path of openness. And it always open at the very moment that we're ready to accept that we're wrong. We are ready to accept that we are inadequate. We are ready to accept that, hey, I'm not in the right place. <laughs> why, would, why, why, would, why would we want to accept that, I guess? Where, where does that lead us to? That, that willingness to accept is the willingness. It itself is a statement of openness. But you're thinking about the willingness to accept. If you're a different party from me, and you say something about your party, Am I ready to accept? Political party. Could be political party. party. Okay. Religious, religious party. Okay. <laughs> Any affiliation. Got Any it. affiliation that uh -huh. we associate with, right? But the idea of I'm ready, I'm listening, I'm ready to open, that already is a statement of openness. And then we cultivate that statement. We cultivate that readiness that we never want to be that, oh, I possess the truth. We never see that. And that's why the definition that I am the light is so wonderful because I am the light, the light doesn't possess anything, the light doesn't say that I can be wrong, the light doesn't say that, hey, darkness, you're wrong. No, the light just simply be the light. And therefore, cultivate a sense of ready to accept, ready to receive. That readiness it, itself is the, the form of openness. And then when you open, you keep open. And you keep to listen to the moment that your mind say, wow, I think that is the beginning of the path of giving. And it's keep giving. The giving has no end. And if you go back and you try to ask yourself, okay, so now I'm closed. How can I be open? Mm -hmm. right. That's a question, right? Right. The, the, I guess the sense, though, that I get is, you know, the, the number one comment I get about this program and you is that you look peaceful and you've talked about the importance of openness in creating that peace. How does openness create that sense of peace, that sense of calm that I get so many comments about? The openness itself is peace. That when we let go to the sense that I need to own this, I need to be right, I need to be someone, just be nobody. Just accept the fact that the light doesn't own anything, then suddenly you release so much anxiety. You can be free from so much attachment and burdens. That's a conceptual. And to do the practice, that we always have to take two things. One, the exercise to have a stretching, have the body stretch. Number two is to be calm enough to realize that very beautiful thing inside that we call the light. So usually we always focus on a, a, a seat of light and we focus on it and be very happy any time that we focus on it. And we see that that focusing on that syllable, on that seat, already the openness. We're not looking for, okay, I need to cultivate that for 10 years, 20 years in order to be somewhere. No, 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 no. The moment that we focus on the inside, that moment is the moment of openness. So we, so we define wrongly. We think that, okay, uh, give me the practice. Let me try it for uh, 10 years or 20 years or maybe three months, and then, then we got the result. No. It's instant. It's the instant realization. It's instant growth right there. And to believe in that is the mind that we, we're ready to accept. And, and everything has its opposite, and we like to stay positive here. I've heard say when someone says, okay, that person is closed-minded. Mm -hmm. what, what is wrong? Why, and I, I guess it's assumed that closed-minded is a negative. Um, what, what does a closed-minded create? What is that? Right, right. How, how does a person feel who's closed-minded internally? Yeah, I understand the, the closeness. The closeness of the mind, usually we call dualism, uh -huh. always get stuck in right and wrong. And then we protect our position. I had to be right. And because of that, I close myself with the others. And we, listen, we don't listen to others anymore because we, we protect our view. We protect our position and we protect our insecurity. So that's what you say, closeness. And so 
you, you start to see my point why we be the light. And we be the light, then we have people who have different views and, and, and things. You just simply be so happy to listen. You, you don't protect your view, you just, yeah, that's the way you think. Yeah, everyone have a different level of expectation, level of interpretation, different angle of view. And you simply accept them because that's the light. The light, the sun rays go everywhere, regardless of the mountain, the valley, and everywhere. The sun doesn't choose that, okay, I only shine that mountain. So because of that, you don't feel insecure when you are the light. And you don't feel insecure when uh, people have opposite view or stronger than you or um, dominate the conversation. But you feel everything is okay. And because of that, you feel peaceful. The wow is in the moment that you see, you see people, the, the ego, they project the ego, they project their power onto you. And, and you feel, wow, a passing does it stick with you. So the closed minded creates judgments, creates dualism. dualism, this sense of right and wrong. And then, exactly. uh, and then when you're right by nature, you believe everybody else is wrong, then you be feel separated, not right. connected, right. and then you don't open up, is that correct? That's right, exactly, precisely. So, so first step in opening up, we like to end <laughs> this way. Um, uh, how, give me, if I'm a, a, I am a layman um, at, at home, yeah. and I would say, okay, I, I agree, I wanna start to open up, what's, what's a good first step? The first step that we have very specific practice, we call the buffalo, and the movement is you push the hands out like this here, you, you, you stretch your neck, you drop the hand and you say you let go of everything and you open up this and you said open up my heart and then you can come back and you push. Okay. Is when that Tai push, Chi? It's very Tai Chi. That's what we are doing. <laughs> but you're doing it and you realize that, okay, I'm pushing. I'm pushing all this, this uh, prejudice, preconception. I'm pushing them out and I'll drop them, let go of them. And I'm open my heart to accept and receive. And you come back and you like this. So it's very beautiful, but it's very easy. So the first thing, the bar language. And then you come with the deep, deep spiritual language. You visualize on the seat. And one of the seat that is helping um, you open the heart, it's ah. Uh, you see them on the screen, the ah. Uh, and that's it, ah, uh, because you see them when the baby come out in, in life, the baby always say ah, uh, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then, then, yes, you said aha, aha, aha. I there. So I, it seemed to be a wow, equivalent to a wow that you know, I'm open. Ah. So when people tell you something that you're wrong, but ah, uh huh, ah. So that, ah. that's, yeah. So that you focus on that. And as you focus on it, your mind come back to yourself and open up. And it's very wonderful. Every time you breathe in to I, and you expand the sense of spaciousness, the sense of being very free, being broad, abstract, and ineffable. So that's the sense that you, you, put, you, you do emanate from, from ah. If you do that for a while, then you start to see that in anywhere, any place, um, it's very easy for you to accept people. And you realize that everyone had entitled to their views, everyone entitled to what they are doing. You can't force anything on anyone else. And that helps you become less judgmental, become more open, like, like exactly, that. Exactly, like the lotus. And of course, if you, you cultivate and you visualize the lotus, how the lotus open, it has the same effect, that our mind can be open. And that's why in Buddhism, the practice to be a lotus is, is the foremost. We will learn how to be the lotus all the time, to be open, yeah. I think that's a fantastic way to end um, this episode of Enlightened Espresso. Thanks so much, Master. See you soon.